All right. Good morning, everyone. I know that it takes a moment here to get everybody connected to audio. So I'm going to just stall for a little bit to make sure nobody feels like they're missing anything. Um, but welcome. Get some other folks in here. Happy Saturday to you all. I'm so yeah. glad you're with us today. Um, my name is Ginny. Hi there. Um, if you guys want to turn your cameras on so that you can see and we can see your happy faces, that is great. You are also welcome to leave it off, but please do leave your microphones off so that we aren't distracted by any extra sounds and we can focus on our presenter here. All right, we get some everybody bundled up for, for a story together. I love it, snuggled together. Well, my name is Jenny and I am with Anderson's Bookshops and I just wanna welcome you all on this here anyway, not quite yet sunny, um, January Saturday, and um, I'm so glad that you can take time to look at another screen just for a little while for this nice. awesome story time with our friend Ryan Higgins, who we're so glad to have back, um, even if it's virtually. Normally, we would be doing this in person, of course, at the store with over 400 other events during a year, but um, of course, this year we are, and last year, this now, this time, shall we say, we can't say just this year anymore. We have to be apart, but we are hoping that this format can at least give us a chance to share some books together, even if we can't do it in person. So Anderson's, for those of you who may not be familiar with us, we are an independent bookstore. That means we're actually run and owned by the Anderson family and have been for going on six generations or so really long time. Um, we've been around for over a hundred years and we uh, just love the ability to connect with you. Like I say, even if it's in um, this virtual way as opposed to in person. So um, when you come to one of our events, it really means a lot to us. So we just like to take a minute to say thank you. Um, I sit in the basement of the Naperville store myself and it's really nice after all of our work planning things to see some faces enjoying the work that we that we have to share with you today. So um, we do have lots of other events coming up. So hopefully you can check out our website and, and see some other things that are coming up to uh, enjoy for all ages and interests. But um, I'm so happy to welcome Ryan back. Um, I love Ryan's book. First of all, just personally, my family loves Ryan's books. I will admit that we do have a picture of Penelope hanging up in my youngest child's room that you made one of the years you came, Ryan, before oh, cool. We Don't Eat Our Classmates even came out. I remember drawing that. Yes. Um, it's a super special thing. And um, Ryan and I have got to know each other a little bit. We have a couple of things in common. So we like to talk about those things when we get to see each other. And it's always just a fun pleasure to have him back. So Ryan is the author of many books, New York Times bestselling books. And um, he is here today to share his newest book, Spring Stinks, about one of our very favorite characters, Bruce the Bear. And I'm going to turn it over to him to take it away. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks for being with us again. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to see all your faces. Um, I, it's been a weird year in that I, I don't get to go out and see my audience very often or at all. So I'm, I'm really glad that I can be here with you virtually and I can, I can see you and, and that's fantastic. Sometimes um, when I'm making books, I forget that other people read them. So it's really great to see my audience like this. I am, uh, like Jenny said, um, my name is Ryan and I'm glad to hang out with you today. I wanna to thank Anderson's Bookshop um, for having me and Ginny for setting this up. Um, I am here because I have a brand new book. It's only been out for a few days. It is called Spring Stinks. It is about our friend Bruce the Bear. Um, it is a little Bruce book. See, it has a little seal on it. It says a little Bruce book. See, this is a regular Bruce book right here. And this is a little Bruce book, quite a bit smaller. Um, we're going to be doing a few of these. This is a, a, kind of the start of a new series of Bruce books. I think we'll do about four. They're all going to be seasonal based ones. And this is the, the start of them. Um, interesting thing about me making a book called Spring Stinks is that I don't have a sense of smell. I was born that way. I've never been able to smell anything. So I thought, what a great idea for me to make a book about smells because I know nothing about them. So um, maybe you kids can be the judges to whether or not I got the whole smelling concept down. Does that sound okay to you guys? Yeah? All right, cool. Um, before I get started reading, I want to talk just a little bit about um, myself and my job. So kids, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions and you can either nod your heads yes or shake your heads no or raise your hand just to show that you know something. I'm not actually going to call on you right now. We're going to do questions and answers um, near the end of the, of, the little, of the program. So first, 
I am an author and an illustrator of picture books. Raise your hand if you know what that means. All right, cool. Okay, so kids, if you know what an author does, raise your hand. Keep your hand up if you know what an author does. All right, okay. So if you get your hands up, you know that it's an author's job to trim elephants' nose hairs. Is that what authors do? No, 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 no. Authors sleep in in the morning. No, well, some of them do. Let's see. Now, authors write the words in books, right? Yeah, that's what authors do. So that's part of my job. Now, the other one, illustrators. Raise your hand if you know what an illustrator does. That's a, that's a bigger word. It might be a little hard. Okay, you all, you all have your hands up. Okay, so if you've got your hands up, you know that illustrators... Um, let's see, what do they do? They trim wildebeest's mm, fingernails. No, they don't. They, mm, let's see, they draw pictures? They do, yeah. You know what else illustrators do? You may not know this. Illustrators work in their pajamas. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. So, I am an author and an illustrator, which means I get to write stories. I get to draw pictures, and sometimes I work in my pajamas. Does that sound like a fun job? Yeah? All right, cool. Um, who here wants to grow up to be an author or an illustrator? Raise your hand if you do. Oh, wow, a bunch of you. Okay, cool. All right, hands down. Now, um, raise your hand if you want to. I want to find out which one you want to be. Raise your hand if you want to be an author, the one who writes the words. Okay, all right. Raise your hand if you want to be an illustrator, the one who draws the pictures and wears pajamas. Okay, cool. Raise both hands if you want to be both. All right, I see a lot of hands up. Cool, all right, hands down. All right, so if you want to grow up to be an author or an illustrator or both, you might be interested to find out the secret on how to become an author and an illustrator. Are, are you ready for the secret, right? Okay, so... First, for starters, was I born as an author and an illustrator? No, I wasn't. I was born as a baby. And babies are not very good at writing or drawing, are they? No, they're not. But they grow up into kids like you, and they learn to write, and they learn to draw, and that's what I did. When I was about your age, when I was in maybe kindergarten, first, second, third grade, I was not the best writer in my class. I was not the best illustrator in my class either, but I liked writing and drawing pictures more than the other kids. So I did it more. And who knows what happens when you do something a lot? Raise your hand. When you get lots of practice. Okay, cool. So you know when you get lots of practice, you get better at something, right? Yeah. So the reason I have my job making these books is not because I'm extra special. I am a regular person. I have a really cool job because I worked really hard and I got lots of practice. And that is the secret to becoming an author and an illustrator. There are four main things to work on. There's lots of things, but four main ones. And these are them. First, you gotta work hard in school. That's very important. Next, you have to read tons of books because reading makes you smarter. You have to write lots of stories for practice and you have to draw lots of pictures for practice. Kids, does that sound like four things that you can do? Yeah, okay, cool. I see lots of heads nodding, yes. That means that those of you who work hard enough on those four things, you're gonna grow up to be authors and illustrators someday and you might run me out of business. Does that sound good? Okay, good, all right, this is my plan. I'm going to read out of this book. Then I'm going to draw on my easel back there. And then after that, you can ask me some questions. So I, I believe we've got like a little chat drop down menu. You can type questions in there. That might be the easiest way to do it. We'll see how this goes. Um, I might see if I can unmute people to ask me questions at some point later on. We'll, we'll get to that stuff later. If you have a question while I am, um, hanging out with you. Just hold on till the end and that's when we can get to that stuff. All right, here we go. So this is Spring Stinks, written and illustrated by me. 
Okay, when you open it up, the first thing you see is the dedication. It says to Griffin, Cece, and Harrison, my favorite little stinkers. Those are my children. That is, that's why I can call them stinkers. It is springtime in Soggy Hollow and everyone is happy. Everyone but Bruce. I love the smells of spring, says Ruth. Spring stinks, says Bruce. Ruth has a basket, a very nice basket. Let's smell some smelly springtime smells together, says Ruth. That is my basket, says Bruce. Ooh, the green smell of green smelling grass, says Ruth. Grr, grumbles Bruce. Ah, the sweet smell of sweet smelling daisies, says Ruth. Grr, rumbles Bruce. Does he look happy all wrapped in those flowers? No, not really. Daisies aren't for Bruce, I guess. Mmm, the woodsy smell of woodsy smelling trees, says Ruth. Ouch, mumbles Bruce. Look where she's poking that branch. See, I told you I don't know much about smelling because I can't smell, I don't know how it works. So this is, that's why I drew her poking the branch right into his nose. That's how you smell, right? You stick things right up your nose to smell them. Is that, is that, no? Okay, I guess I got that wrong. All right, what else? Have? Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're gonna love the next one, says Ruth. I wonder what it could be. Wet moose. Kids, do you think wet moose smells good? It doesn't look like it. Mm. Get out of my basket. Bruce does not like the smell of wet moose. I know, says Ruth. Bears love the smell of honey. Uh-oh. Look over here. Do those bees look happy? No, now they're angry. Look, look, they're all buzzing around. And here's this one. It's making a bee line right to Bruce. This smells like trouble. See, there's that bee line again. Look, bink. And now the bee line has become behind. Look at that, poor Bruce. Running, he's tumbling down the hill. But there's Ruth, she's still happy, bouncing along behind him. <laughs> Spring stinks, says Bruce. It sure does, says Ruth. The end. Look, there's one last smell for Bruce right there. Does he look happy about that one? Nope. And there goes the wet moose. Look, he's still wet. See, he's still dripping. There. Well, thank you for listening to me read my book for you. Um, an excellent place for you to purchase that book. If you wanted to get one, would be Anderson's Bookshop. Um, I am going to draw a picture for you now. Does that sound fun? Now, kids at home, um, if you want to draw along with me, you can. Don't worry about it. I think um, we're recording this, so you can watch it later, too. Uh, so if, if you don't have time to run and grab a piece of paper and a marker or a pencil, that's cool. You can just hang out, and this is being recorded. You can probably go back and watch it um, later. I am going to draw Bruce the Bear for you. Let's get my easel out. There we go. All right. That's right. And and uh, Ginny from Anderson's Bookshop said, if you need a signed copy, um, I think they have book plates. I signed a ton of book plates, and um, I believe you can you can get books with my signature in them already from Anderson's. Okay. So here we go. This is my great big sharpie here. 
So Bruce is just made up of a bunch of regular shapes, okay? So if you were gonna draw Bruce, you would start by drawing a hairy circle. So let's draw a hairy circle up here. There we go. There is a hairy circle. It's a little bit squashed, but that's okay. If you're drawing a circle at home, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. On top of this hairy circle, we're going to put a couple more hairy circles. We're gonna do one right there and another one right there. And now in the bottom of this circle, we're gonna put another circle. We're gonna put it right here. Here we go. Inside this circle, we're going to put an upside down triangle. Like that. And we're gonna color it in a little bit. So this is Bruce's snout with his nose in there. Underneath that nose, we're gonna put a little line. That's gonna be his mouth. It doesn't usually turn into a smile. It's usually just like a little straight line. Now, really low down on Bruce's face, that's where his eyes go, right about in line with his nose. A little dot right there, and another little dot right there. So this could be any bear right now. To make this into Bruce, it needs this, a grumpy unibrow. All right, now we're gonna add some hair. Put some hair in the ears here. There we go. Okay, so that is how I draw Bruce's head. When I am autographing a book for someone, if they buy a book and I am signing it at a bookstore, um, usually what I'll do is I'll draw Bruce's head and then I'll put my autograph underneath it. But since we have a little more time, usually when I'm drawing in a, in a book for somebody, I wanna, um, there's a line of people and I wanna draw as many as I can kind of quickly. So I will do a head like that and I stop there. But we've got more time. So I'm gonna draw the rest of Bruce's body for you. Bruce's body is kind of egg shaped. We start up here, his shoulders, he's got hairy shoulders, and they start out right about level with his eyebrow and his shoulders kind of slope down into rounded, stumpy arms. There we go, right about there. And then his body is pretty rounded because he is a bear. And um, let's say he's, you know, he's getting ready for winter. So he's got some extra insulation on there. A lot of us get that right before winter time and during winter anyways, whether you're a bear or a person. All right, we'll put some more hair here. Let's see, that's looking okay. Make that a little bit thicker over there. So kids, normally I don't draw from the side like this. I'm usually drawing like this on my computer with something right in front of me. So if this is a, it's a little bit of a weird angle for me, but he's coming out okay. So we've got his belly here. Now he's got short stumpy legs, little knees, and then big wide feet. His feet are kind of like big furry slippers. Yeah, it looks okay. And we're gonna add the hair on here. So when I am drawing Bruce for a book, he does not take me four minutes like this one did. He takes me two or three hours. And a lot of that time is actually spent drawing his fur. His fur all goes in a very particular way. So like on his shoulders, his fur all goes out this way or this way. And then his hair, his, the hair on his arms, they kind of, they're a little longer and they all drape down towards his fingers. Um, but on his head, it goes, kind of goes towards the outside, no matter which way of the circle you're going. So it always goes like that around his head. I'm very conscious of where his hair is facing and what direction it's going in while I'm drawing. So you could spend however long you want on this, but I'm not gonna take a couple hours on this because that would be boring. All right, there we go. That is how I would draw Bruce the Bear kind of fast. The last thing is my autograph. To do that, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna write, let's see if you can see this. R squiggle H squiggle line line dot dot G G squiggle dot line. There you go. See, clearly that says Ryan T Higgins, right? All right, there. Um, thank you very much for watching me read and watching me draw. Now would be a neat time to open it up to questions. Oh, you know what? Actually, before we do, I totally forgot something I wanted to share with you. 
two things. One is I have another Bruce book coming out in a few months in May. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek preview of it. I can't read it to you because um, I don't think my publisher would allow it, but I can show you the cover and tell you a little bit about it. So this was Spring Stinks, right? That was a little one. Um, but I've got, you know, this is the first Bruce book. This is a regular sized one. And I've got another regular sized Bruce book coming out. It is called The Bruce Swap. And it is about Bruce's identical cousin, Kevin, who is very, very fun. And how Bruce is always grumpy, right? He's grumpy and he doesn't really like to do too much. But this is Kevin. And Kevin is the opposite of that. He is super fun. And the story is about one day when Kevin comes over for a visit and all the fun he brings with him. The trouble is, Kevin is too much fun. And we find out that too much fun can be no fun at all. So that's what that one's about. And I'm super excited about it. I was thinking actually, um, when I go on tour for this, that I should bring my brother with me who looks just like me. He's not my twin, he's my older brother, but we look a lot alike. Um, but he uh, doesn't like talking to audiences, so I don't think I could bring him with me. All right, one other thing I wanted to share with you. This is even more of a sneak peek preview. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if I'm allowed to share it with you, but I'm going to anyways. Um, this is just a very quick drawing of my next character in a new book that has nothing to do with Bruce or Penelope. This right here is Norman. And I just finished making um, a book about Norman. So Norman is a porcupine and Norman's best friend is Mildred, who is a tree. And um, the story starts off with Norman being very happy with the way his life is. He's got his best friend, Mildred. He doesn't want anything to change. And then one day, a little tiny sapling of a tree starts growing next to Mildred and Norman gets very jealous because he does not want things to change and he does not want to share his friend. Um, so that was a very fun book to make. It was fun to make something that wasn't part of my Bruce series or my Penelope series. Um, uh, yeah, okay, now let's open up to questions. Ginny, if you wanted to hop back on and help me figure the questions out, that would be lovely. Absolutely. Well, that was really fun. And you guys, you got a sneak peek of something that I don't even think I've heard about at the bookstore yet. A it's porcupine a in a tree. What a special treat. Okay, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Okay. Um, let's see. Paul says, hi, Ryan. We love the books and how you're creating a Bruceiverse, which I love that word. Oh, is that <laughs> Paul as in Paul Lurie? Yes. It is, yes. I'm friends with Paul. Hello, Paul and Paul's family. Ah, hello, Paul and Paul's family. Welcome. <laughs> it's great seeing background characters become main characters. Will Wet Moose get his own book? Oh, well, Wet Moose, I, well, I don't think Wet Moose is going to get his own book, but Wet Moose is definitely going to be a recurring character because Wet Moose is very fun to work with. I so are, I'm already writing Wet Moose into the next Little Bruce book. So, um, you know, I might, I may, I may make Wet Moose make a, a take a bigger role. We'll see. So somebody else asked if the moose and the raccoon have names. Well, um, hmm, you know, yes, they do, but I don't know what they are. Uh -huh. I, I haven't been told yet. So um, we'll, I, I suppose I should find that out before I start writing more books about them. <laughs> I mean, wet moose is a pretty good name. So I, yeah, I think, yeah. I think wet moose is wet moose's name. That's a pretty good name. Um, and Paula also asked who's snoozing on the couch, which I think oh. is a great question. Yeah, that is Sonora the dog. She is my dog. She is, um, she is 12 years old. We got her from the Sonoran Desert, which is, that is why she got her name. We adopted her. She was a, a homeless dog in the desert. And she's also my quietest dog, which is why she's in the studio with me. We have another dog named Sylvia, um, who she's a lovely dog, but she makes funny noises when she's sleeping. And I didn't want to distract from the reading. Sometimes she'll just go <laughs> in her sleep. And um, I didn't want you to think there was something wrong in my room, so. <laughs> now I understand you have, you have some more animals that share your world. I do, yeah, we've got the two dogs and we've got, uh, we have three cats now. Um, we just got a kitten. She's like this big, she's so cute. Her name is Mabel. So we have three cats. I also have a gecko and I have a tortoise. So do your pets at home inspire any of your books? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. 
let's see what I have here. Uh, the tortoise shows up quite often as a background character, um, as some, uh, they're actually, so I, I take some liberties and I change her from a tortoise into a wood, into wood turtles, but there are wood turtles that live in Bruce's neighborhood. Let's see if I can find, um, in Bruce's big move, there's a whole scene where there's a turtle construction crew. They're building a house yes. very slowly. Um, and uh, these are all based on my tortoise, whose name is Penelope, which is where the name for Penelope Rex comes from. I love that your tortoise is has a different life as a T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and everyone. then, <laughs> see, I do have another one too. Um, my old dog, Loki, let's see, I think he, he's also in here. Yeah, so um, my old dog, Loki, passed away a few years ago. He passed away around the time I was making Bruce's big move. And so as an homage, I, I drew him as a coyote into my book. He didn't, he looked quite a lot like this. He was a little less gray, a little more gold colored, but um, that was sort of my little tribute to my old dog. That's very sweet. Um, other folks, if you have, if you have a question, do you want to like raise your hand on your video or using the, um, the reaction button and then I'll call on you. Here's one, Tegan, I'm going to unmute you. Hi, do you have a question? What's your gecko's name? What's your gecko's name? Oh, my gecko's name is Tanuki. Um, and named after two things. There was, if you're familiar with Mario Brothers, there's the Tanuki suit, which is a raccoon. But actually my Tanuki is named after my grandmother's sister. So my great aunt, her name was not Tanuki. She had a pet raccoon, which is not really a good thing to have, but you know, way back when people had all sorts of different pets and she had a pet raccoon that was named Tanuki. And my gecko doesn't look anything like a raccoon, um, but I just like the name. So I went with Tanuki. He is super old. Um, he's like 18 years old. I've had him for a really long time. And I don't think they're supposed to live that long. He's just some, for some strange reason, he just is living forever. He's magic, maybe. I love it. Yeah. All right, let's see. I think, Skylar, do you have a question? Are your cats in the studio with you? My cats are not in the studio with me right now. Um, sometimes I'll what bring one, one cat out at a time. Um, but also my studio is in the backyard uh, at my house. So I, I have a little tiny cabin that I built and it's outside um, of my house. I have to walk across my lawn to get here. And um, sometimes when I'm here, if the cats are in here, they try to get out whenever I go in and out. Whereas in the house, we've got a mudroom they have to go through and the cats can't get out because our cats are inside cats only. We have lots of coyotes and foxes and fishers that live around our house. And um, we would prefer our cats not to be eaten by those things. And so we keep them inside. So sometimes the cats come out. Uh, the cats names are in order of age. Our oldest one is Clementine. She is 13. She was a Valentine's Day present to me from my wife uh, 13 years ago. Uh, she's very sweet. She looks like a little Clementine, those oranges. She's teeny tiny. She's a little stubby cat. And then our other cat is Oscar. We got him last year. Um, my kids helped name him. So he's not just Oscar. His name is Oscar Mittens Nimbus Higgins. So that's, that's his name. And then our newest little kitty, her name is Mabel. And our kids helped name her too. So her name is Mabel Princess Margaret Higgins. I love it's it. It's really fun because the vets have to print the entire name on the label for any medications <laughs> we get for them. And uh, <laughs> that's fun. Oh, I see lots of really cool Bruce yes. drawings up there. I was there. just going to say, we've got anybody else who did a drawing, if you want to hold it up, those are great. Uh, I see Either some and great Allie and the Lurie budding, family. I see some great budding illustrators out there. Maybe future interns. I don't know. I think I think there's someone from your publisher on this call. So I think he should maybe take a look and make see there if are, there's somebody we want to snatch up. There are two people. There are two people from my publisher. There's my my editor Tracy is on, and then oh. um, my publicist Seal is on. Oh, I didn't know your editor was here too. That's exciting. You guys did some awesome work. Look at those grumpy eyebrows. Oh, I love the it. Eyebrows are fantastic. You can get so so much of Bruce is in the eyebrow. Because it, it's funny, uh, one of the things about drawing Kevin, I'll bring him back up here. Kevin, Bruce's identical cousin, is that he has sort of just regular thick eyebrows. There's not one solid eyebrow. 
And that was interesting drawing. Basically it's the same character design as Bruce, but without the eyebrow and it made him completely different. Wow. Okay. So now this question makes a bit more sense then because Tracy asked, can you show us what a real black bear skull looks like? Oh yes, I can. <laughs> do you have that ability? I do, um, because so here's the thing, kids. I am a vegetarian. Well, I'm a pescatarian. It means I eat fish, but mostly I eat vegetables. However, I do have a collection of animal skulls. Most of them are not real, or they are from roadkill, um, which means just something that had already died. A lot of them hit, hit by cars or something. And I have a degree in um, ecology, which means I studied animals and stuff. So I, I actually like um, working with bones and stuff. And uh, anyways, this is a black bear skull right here. I'll show it to you. This is the only skull in my collection that um, was purchased and it was it is a real one. So my wife bought this for me at a flea market. She found it at a flea market. It had been in somebody's basement for like 30 years. This is a black bear skull, not super big. This is actually a female black bear skull. Let me show you a comparison. I know you didn't come here for a science lesson, but you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> this. Well, these, these are the things you need to learn. I mean, to draw uh, in anyway, right? This right here is a different kind of bear skull. This is a Kodiak bear skull, a bit bigger, right? This wow. is like Bruce's long distant cousin. Someday I'd like to put a Kodiak bear in a Bruce book. It might be fun to do a giant bear. That looks Hold heavy. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Cheryl asked, why is Bruce so grumpy? Yeah, well, you know, some people are grumpy and so some bears are grumpy. I'm grumpy sometimes, sometimes I'm not, you know, but there are some people who are grumpy most of the time. And so Bruce just happens to be grumpy. He's only grumpy on the outside. He's not mean. It's important to remember that he's not mean. He's just grumpy. He's kind of a stick in the mud. Um, Bruce is based on my grandfather, who is a very, he's a, a typical Mainer. He passed away a few years ago, but he was a lovable grump. And he was always getting into all sorts of very hilarious um, mishaps. And he seemed to be sort of the center of all sorts of weird things coming together and making very funny stories about him that just kind of happened to him. So, so I don't know if we said it, you kind of hinted at it right there, but you, you live in Maine in the woods, I, right? Yeah. So I live in a small town in, well, actually it's not small by Maine standards, but by the rest of the country, it's small. Um, I live in a, a town called Kittery. It's the southernmost town in Maine. I like to call it the Miami of Maine. <laughs> so I, that's why I think somebody asked, um, do you ever see moose in your yard? And I guess um, I Yeah, no, I don't see moose in my yard. Um, we live not too far from, so we live only an hour from Boston. Um, so we, I live in a neighborhood. Um, we have woods behind my house, but most of the houses in my town don't have that much for woods. Um, but if you were to drive 20 minutes from here, you could definitely see some moose. I also live on the, um, pretty close to the ocean and moose are a little more in the interior. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I live with someone who went to college in Maine and we always, I was always excited to go see moose, but I never, of all the times I visited, um, when he was there, I never saw a moose. And so it's a running joke that there aren't actually moose in Maine because I have not personally seen one. So... The best way to see a moose is to drive up one of the, any of the roads that runs like north to south in the, in the middle of Maine. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah, it like near nighttime, they like to come out near like right around dusk and dawn to hang out near the, yes. edge of the road. Black well, bears are easier to see. So you can, that they would be at Acadia State Park or National Park, excuse me, but I didn't see moose when I was there either. So that's, you know, that's a goal for me as I've seen them in books, of course, but um, I have not seen one in Maine. And so they don't exist in Maine until I see one. I lived in Acadia for four years and I never saw a moose. Well, I lived in Bar Harbor, but I never okay. saw a moose in Acadia. I think, All right. I don't think there are very many. Okay. Well, go I'm going to Baxter. I'm gonna go back with that information because yeah. I still hold that it doesn't, it's you not should, true till I've seen it, right? Sometimes that's a, a way to think, isn't it kids? <laughs> you should get a refund. Well, on a marriage, I don't know about that. Oh, but no, yeah. no. <laughs> on the trip. <laughs> All right. Now I saw somebody More. had a, their hand up. Is it um, the Sieber family? Did you have your question there? No, nope, no question. Okay, no question. All right. All right. Did anybody else have their hand up? I have a question or in the chat? I can ask myself a question that kids usually ask. Oh yes, please do. Kids, do you want to know how I come up with book ideas? 
All right, so I have two answers. The first answer is that every third Tuesday of the month, I hike up a mountain in my town called Mount Agameticus, and I meet an elephant named Gertrude at the top of the mountain. And she has a bucket hanging from the end of her trunk. And in that bucket are book ideas. And I take those ideas, I bring them home, and I make a book. Do you think that's how I do it? No. No, that is a very exciting answer because the real answer to the question, how do I come up with book ideas, is I don't know. I wish I had something that I did that, had, that helped me come up with ideas, um, but I don't. I have found out though, the more books I read, the more ideas I come up with, and the more fun, active things I do outside, the more ideas I come up with. So I try to read a lot and do a lot of fun, active stuff like hiking and right, uh, running and biking and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Oh, I see another cool Bruce drawing. So um, yeah, that's how I come up with ideas. That's a great one. Um, the Seaber family wants to know, we actually want to know what your favorite animal is. We love the thorny devil. Oh, thorny devils are so cool. Um, those are the ones that uh, they've got, they've got those thorns and they, they like in the morning, they'll, they'll like stand in the desert with their head down and their rear end up a little bit and they collect the dew that settles in the desert because it doesn't rain very much, but as they, they collect the dew and the water dribbles down there, all those spines and then into their mouth. That's how they drink. It's cool. Really neat. Thorny devils are amazing. I've, I've caught one once when I lived in the desert for a year. That was lots of fun. Um, my favorite animal, it's hard for me to choose. I have a favorite group of animals. It's the, the dog family. So my three favorite animals are, uh, I really like red foxes. I really like coyotes and I really like wolves. Um, right now, I'm going back and forth between coyotes and red foxes. But I also really like wolves. You know what else is cool? Um, they don't exist anymore. They went extinct in the 1930s. Thylacines, which are the um, Tasmanian wolf or the Tasmanian tiger. They're very cool. Yeah. There was a Wild Kratts episode about them. Yeah, Anyone who's, yeah, yeah, I see heads on it. Yep, yep. <laughs> Yes, there was. And I think that's why a lot of these age kids might know what they are. That's awesome. Um, okay, what kind of picture books did you like when you were a kid? That's a great question. Oh, what did you excellent read? Excellent question. Um, my biggest influence when I was a kid was Calvin and Hobbes. So I was really big into comic strips. I also really liked um, Mutts by Patrick McDonald, which I think is still running. Uh, yes, Patrick's been to our store. Yeah, yeah, I know he has. So he is the, the one person that I have met so far as an author and illustrator that I could not bring myself to talk to because I was a big fan of him when I was a kid. So, um, so like I've hung out with Mo Willems, um, but I became a fan of, of Mo when I was a grown up, you know, but like, uh, but uh, Patrick was because I sent him actual fan mail when I was a kid, for some reason, I could not say hi to Patrick McDonald. So I read mostly comic strips when I was a, when I was a kid. Um, definitely see some hobs in your drawings of yeah yeah. In there. It, yeah and i draw trees in a similar way or at least i i some of how i draw trees i i must have picked up from the calvin and Hobbes stuff um i also liked i read where the wild things are quite a lot when i was a kid and um oh bill pete bill pete i love bill pete books i still do yes yes garfield did you read garfield uh yes yes awesome some. i did some yep so another question is, we saw a bunch of Mo Williams, Mo, Mo Willems, excuse me, books as cartoons um, on TV. Any chance Bruce will appear in an animated way in the future? Well, we don't have any um, contracts or anything signed for that sort of thing. I'm talking vaguely because mm. I'm legally not at liberty to talk too much about it. There's no guaranteed thing set in stone but I would love for there to be a Bruce TV show someday. And it's not out of the realm of possibility there. I talked around in a circle pretty well there. That's wonderful. In a, in a hairy circle. You talked in a hairy yeah, circle. Yeah, in a hairy circle, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's fantastic. It's so nice well, to see characters that we love in lots of different ways. Well, it may or may not be fantastic. Okay. Because I have people from my publishing um, play here and that, yeah, so we- <laughs> The possibility of things would be fantastic. Yeah, Let's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's a stronger possibility, and I still can't say it's definitely a thing. There's a stronger possibility that one of my other characters might be doing something that's a little further along in a, something, but a, a in a format item. that it's is very, yeah. yeah, another Wonderful. circle, less less hairy, more scaly, the more scaly circle. <laughs>
of discussion. Yep. You guys are so lucky. Everybody who's here, you're getting some super secret possibilities of information that not everybody knows. You all have to keep that secret though. <laughs> yes, until it's there. That's exciting. Well, it is, it is great to know that there is more, there are more Ryan T. Higgins characters coming in whatever format they may be, whether that be the, more, the seasonal Little Bruce books or Bruce's cousin. I can't wait to learn more about Kevin. I don't yeah. know about you, you wanna, guys. Do you want to hear where Kevin's name comes from? Yes. Kevin is named after my backpack. Does, does that yeah, answer a lot of questions? That answers a lot of questions. Do you want to hear the story about my backpack? I do. Okay. Do you guys want to? Yes. All right. So um, when I was in high school, my dad was the coach of the track team and I was on the track team. And one day we came home from a track meet and we had an extra backpack and it said Kevin on it. And nobody claimed the backpack and no one on our team was named Kevin. And we couldn't figure out who the backpack belonged to. So we kept it. And then from then on, I had a backpack with the name Kevin on it. And it drew a lot of questions. People would ask, why do you have a backpack that says Kevin? And I eventually just had to say, well, that is the name of my backpack. And then my backpack is named Kevin. And so that became funny until I got a job at the Kittery Trading Post in the warehouse and I brought my backpack and then everyone thought my name was Kevin, even my boss. And I was the sort of person that I don't like confrontation. So I didn't correct him. So for about six months while I worked at the Kittery Trading Post, everyone thought my name was Kevin which wow. was very confusing when my paychecks came out and they were yes. like, who's this Ryan? I was like, I'll, I'll give it to him. Kevin is a nickname for Ryan in lots of circles. Yeah. Yes. Right, sure. Oh, we have another drawing here. It's a cool drawing of a cat. Oh, I like that cat. Yes. That is Good a nice work. drawing. I like the hat on that I cat. I think the moral of these stories, Ryan, is that all of the funny things or strange things that happen to you, whether you're a kid or a grown up, can be turned into something else. Absolutely, yeah. Many of my stories come from um, different stories within my real life. It's a, a, I draw lots of inspiration from things that actually happened to me. So did you ever write any of these things down like in, you know, years ago so that you, are you just, these are things that you just remember. I mean, the backpack's a pretty good story to just remember. Yeah, I think I just remember most of them. Also some of the stories I steal from my father. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, stories that happened to my dad or that happened to my grandfather. And I say they happened to me because you know, poetic license, it's fine. They're not published authors. Okay. So another question that I know sometimes people ask authors is um, you said you have a, you have a family and you've got your kids or you dedicated to it. So does your family names other than the name Bruce and their experiences, do your family ever make their way into your books in some form? Oh, yes, they do. I can show you. Ooh. My whole family made it into, we will rock our classmates. Um, two of, so my, my, oldest two kids are in Penelope's class. Um, so if you, let's see if we can go to the class picture here. So in here, um, these two kids right here, that's my son Griffin and that's my daughter Cece. Aww. And the teacher, Mrs. Noodleman, um, looks quite a lot like my wife. So uh, that's, so I drew them in there um, and they've always been in Penelope's class, but between uh, the times that I made the first Penelope book, We Don't Eat Our Classmates, and the second Penelope book, We Will Rock Our Classmates, we had another child. His name is Harrison. We call him Harry. And I didn't want him to feel left out. So when I made this book, I made sure to put him in it um, in one of the scenes near the end. There's an audience scene. And... I put um, my wife and then my son, Harry, and then this guy who is supposed to be a little bit like me um, in the front row here. And next to them, I put um, my grandparents and my wife's grandparents all going down this row and then behind us too. Aww. Yeah. So there's that's, all kinds of little sneaky things in there that you might not notice in just a reader. That's the guy that Bruce is based on. His name was Phil, but we all called him Grandpa Tippy. <laughs> <laughs> and then his, his wife, my grandmother, her name was Bella, but, or Vi, but we called her um, Grammy Tootie. So it's Tippy and Tootie. <laughs> Tippy and Tootie. We were well, little. I, mean, I don't know why we came up with those names, but they stuck. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you guys, but that sounds like a picture book to me. Tippy and Tootie. <laughs> I mean, those could be, you know, like egrets or something. They, I feel yeah, like they could be anything. Are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, let's do, let's do another question here, unless anybody else has a question on the screen. But the one in the chat says, what's the worst idea for a picture book that you've ever had? <laughs> oh, let me think. 
Hmm. That's a great question, actually. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had a lot of bad ones. I don't remember all the bad ones. I do, I can tell you uh, an idea for a picture book that I started and didn't finish because it wound up not being so great. I can, so um, there, I had an idea for a picture book a while ago about a goat that wanted to be a counting sheep. You know, like in, in it, it's a very strange convoluted story. It's why it never became a book. But the premise was that there was, um, you know, there within the sheep community, one of the jobs you can grow up to have is to be a counting sheep, which are the ones that you count at night when they jump over the fence and you count them to fall asleep. And it's a very coveted position. All the, you know, it's like the best job you can have as a sheep. Um, but it was about a little goat who wanted to be one of those sheep. And um, yeah, because it kind of petered out towards the end. So it never became a book. Right, yes. All right, under um, Matthew's screen, am I seeing a hand raised over there? Do you want to ask a question? No, okay, all right. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to know whether you have a question or you're oh, just sure. excited, yeah. I understand. All right, well, I think that is about all the time we have. I was going to ask what else you're working on, Ryan, but I think we got a couple of sneak peeks of a lucky us. Yeah, um, I am one. working on, it, the title might change, but it's such a good title. It's hard to, um, I, uh, I'm working on the next Little Bruce book and it's, so this one's spring themed, the next one's fall themed. Um, so it's supposed to vaguely be around Thanksgiving time we're we're calling it thanks for nothing right now um so yeah but it, it's still in development it could change right 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 i think a grumps giving could be really good in there too, too. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right well if nobody has any other questions i know we've gotten to enjoy our whole story today and spring stinks the newest bruceiverse i'm going to use that now yeah so I, the bruceiverse is great Yes, I think uh, to the folks from Disney, I think you need to get on that. The Bruceiverse is quite the, uh, quite the term. Um, we are so glad to have you all with us today. And thank you so much to Ryan for joining us from your, from your studio in Maine. It feels very exciting. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here in my studio in Maine. Yeah, and the, and the pup in the back who I love has slept through the whole thing. She's Hasn't moved a bit. Quiet. Yep. Yeah. No. <laughs> there she is. So um, if you ordered a book, a signed book, those are going to be ready for you next week. Um, so we'll either mail that to you if that's what you picked or they'll be ready for pickup. I'll send you guys an email when they're ready to, uh, to go out the door. Oh, and we have another furry friend joining us on Leah and oh, Ian. Yay! Pets should always join Zoom calls. That's my yeah. favorite. Um, after seeing all your happy faces. I loved seeing the surprised faces when we got to know the secrets of the book. That was great. So um, stay tuned. You're going to get your copies of the book very, very soon. And if uh, you didn't order one or you need another one, please either call us up at the stores or you can put an order on our website at andersonsbookshop.com. Ask your grownups to do that. We would be more than happy to get you signed copies of Ryan's fantastic books. Um, hopefully this has been such a great way to start your Saturday, your weekend, as it has been for us. We're so glad to have you there. You guys all stay home, stay safe, happy reading. You've got some great stuff to keep you entertained, I know, thanks to authors like Ryan and illustrators, I should say, creators, content creators. And uh, thank you so much, Ryan. Thanks for being with us and best of luck thank for you. all the exciting new things coming up. We can't wait to see you for the next books. Yeah, thanks for having me. And next time, hopefully everyone, we can do this in person. Yes, oh, yep. fingers crossed. Yep. Yeah. Everybody stay bye. safe so we can do that, yeah. okay? Yeah, bye everybody. All right, bye-bye. I'm going to let everybody then pop out, Ryan. <laughs> Got to switch hands while I wave. Right, yes. And I'm just, yep, two more folks. Want to go enjoy, enjoy your day. My, Thank my you. My friends, the Lurie family are still here. Yes, that's lovely. Oh, yes. And <laughs> bye, Paul. Bye, bye, Lurie family. <laughs> this is Skylar, who Hi, has Skylar. the Penelope uh, drawing hanging in her room. Oh yeah, wait. Where were you? Were you were just in another room tuning in? Yes, I remember you and your drawing and the stuff and Big Owl. Oh, yeah. that's so that's cool. Big owl. So yes, yeah, thanks Penelope. for watching. I really appreciate it. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm not off yet. So anyway, I thought I'd just let everybody else go so we could just say goodbye and thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so thank much, you guys. Um, that was great. Seal, can I ask you? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Oh, I, I I know I'm not supposed to say much about any TV stuff that's going on because nothing's set in stone, and yeah. so like I have to talk in circles.
but I, I, I also don't want to be like, there will never be a show. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, you know? what you can say is, oh, that'd be great one day. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, never mind. <laughs> no, that was awesome. I'm so glad that there are potential things. I, I there's such great characters and they're so, I, they're, they just, they, it's like they, I know you work on them quite a bit, but they come to us. It feels fully formed of like Bruce, of course, of course he's grumpy. Of course he looks like that. Of course he adopts geese. Like it, they're great. And it Penelope wasn't a conscious, it, it's never a conscious decision on my part. It's all, it just, I, 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 I write it as if it already exists. And then I have to think by, like, I don't really think about it too much when I make them. Right. Afterwards, well, you get it from Gertrude. So. Right. Yeah. You clearly yeah, need yeah, your own true. story, by the way. An elephant at the top of a mountain <laughs> with a bucket of story ideas. That's evolved over time. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Well, thank you both very, very yeah, much. Thank you so much. I, yeah, I, and, and I really do hope that, you know, um, a few months from now, well, I'm probably going to be like more than that. But anyways, I can't wait to be on the road in person. Yes. Uh, fully vaccinated. I, I know May will probably be too soon for in person, though. See, if we're doing virtual stuff for the next Bruce book. Yes. This is your, yes, your book. Um, somewhere I have F and G's of one of them. That was the first one I saw. Oh, really? The one that don't have a hard spine. They're all soft. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you're doing virtual for the next Bruce book, absolutely. I'm feeling like we probably won't do in person at least until the second half of the year, maybe. Sure. So, yeah. okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm thinking it'll probably books. be the fall before anything like that happens. Better to be safe for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and especially with kids stuff, because we don't know what the vaccination is going to look like for them. I know. I know. So it's yep. so hard. I was just talking to people about this yesterday at work and I just don't know what and what folks will feel comfortable doing. I don't want them to feel like they're missing out, you know, yep. so we'll probably be doing a hybrid of, you know maybe live streaming the event from the store or online or something so that folks who don't feel comfortable coming in, I don't know, we're going to have to figure well, out. Well, and I think there's probably, even when the world is, whatever the new normal is going to be, that hybrid is probably going to continue because there are a lot of advantages for as far as like participation, you know, yeah. and Absolutely. customers yeah. who can't actually physically get somewhere. So yeah, we did a something with another publisher on a, plat a new platform called Chatalyze that mm -hmm. very nicely recreates the signing line experience. You get like nice. a private room for an excellent number of seconds, like 90 oh. seconds or something. Yeah. And then I the see. authors click that. Yeah. It worked really well. Um, and I'm really excited about it. The possibility of doing like an in-person, but then have X number of spots that you can sign up for online that after the in-person part, the author would then switch and then could meet and greet some people virtually who are far away or can't be there or whatever, not comfortable, whatever. Is there a way to capture signatures that way too? Or is it it's just a one-on-one? -on -one? It's just a video one-on-one -on -one yeah. for right now, but they can take like their their selfies, you know, so they feel yeah. like they get a picture. Um, That's fun. Yeah, and there's a there was a way for me to sort of lurk as the background person to make sure everything was going smoothly too, which I liked. <laughs> cool. I really like, and I hope we get to keep this, the, the um, people can order books from the bookstore from around the country now, which is great. I mean, it, it was always possible, but now it's become a pretty normal thing. So oh, it's yes. like, I can do the sign. I mean, I can be here and people who aren't actually physically within a half hour drive can still, you know. It's interesting with the virtual, you know, events that we've done, there's a lot of international pickup too, that people are, you know, coming yeah. in and because, you know, why not? If, yeah, if we haven't figured that out yet. We can't seem to figure out a way to ship that's not, a bajillion dollars yeah <laughs> that's sure. trackable and safe um because yeah. there's yeah. there are several authors specifically that seem to have international draw um on the on the kids and sort of celeb type side that yeah. um you know and that, so they could buy, buy tickets and often i say you know we can't really ship that to you because it says it pretty clearly on our ticketing but would you like to donate that to our book angels program and they're like oh yeah so then they get the still experience and see the author and um you know a, a kid at a disadvantage gets a book which is nice too so cool yeah all right. Well, you guys, it was great. All right, to guys, see you. have a great day. Yes. Enjoy Thanks your so weekend. Thanks Thank and congrats you. again, Ryan. Take oh, care. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Well, bye. Bye.